Okay, I'll welcome you all to our third session for financial reporting and analysis. Uh, and as promised, uh, today we start to do our workings, which will uh, form the main part of your, of your examination. So I remember on your first day, I showed you guys the nature of your exams. I don't remember which paper that I showed you, but in essence, with each question paper that you are going to do, uh, one of the questions, for example, in this question paper, question number one, is going to be create a statement of comprehensive income. Then the next question uh, is going to be on uh, changes in equity. Then another one is going to be on your uh, cash flow statement. And then another one on your financial position, right? So those are the key questions that you are going to get. Even in each paper, if you check uh, most of the past exam papers, those are the key questions that you are going to get. It's very rare for him to deviate from that standard. If he deviates, it's mainly because he has introduced maybe a little bit of uh, some theory, but like I said, it's very rare. Most of the times in each question paper, you are going to do an income statement, you're going to do a statement of financial position, you're going to do a cash flow statement, and you're going to do a um, statement of changes in equity. So that is the key. So if you remember from our earlier conversation, where I said that we're going to spend a lot of time in unit number one. Now, the reason for us spending a lot of time in unit number one is because in unit number one, uh, uh, the 1.8 section, it includes most of the information that you will need. The other information is financial analysis, which is in unit number five. We'll deal with it when we get to it. But most of the information that you need for the preparation of your cash flow statement, for the preparation of your statement of financial position, for the preparation of your statement of comprehensive income, it is going to be in unit number one. So that is what we are starting now uh, today over here. Okay. Right. So that is what we are starting over here today. Okay. So we are on 1.8 now. We've done all the other ones. We are now on 1.8. So one it says that we are going to be summarizing financial information. So in our summarizing financial information, as I highlighted in our first lecture, there are four key statements that you need to understand. The first statement is called the statement of comprehensive income, and we are going to cover it today, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to go through what you need to understand the statement of comprehensive income. We are going to go through an example, and then I'm going to give you guys a homework, right, after going through the example. So the example that we we'll go through is a past exam paper. The homework that I'll give you is, again, a past exam paper. So we will then meet uh, next week uh, on Tuesday, then to do the answers for the homework that I've given you so that you can test if you've, uh, you've done well or not. And the way that uh, I do my tutoring, as you can see, is mainly focusing on past exam papers, is because I noticed that if we do a lot of past exam papers and you guys attempt the homework that I've given you, if you see that you got, uh, let's say, uh, 18 out of 20 in your homework, it also means that when the exam comes, you get 18 out of 20, because that's basically what you've done, you've basically done a, a, a sample of the exam. So you get into the exam confident that you're going to get your distinction at the end of the day. And then if there's anything that you didn't understand, then you can ask it in the question instead of miss, meeting it in the exam, you can even ask it in the lectures, and then we can clarify it for you so that your knowledge on the subject what improves. So I will not really focus a lot on some of the nitty gritties of the study module, but rather I'll focus on a lot of past exam papers so that you are adequately prepared for your what, for your past, uh, for your for your examination at the end of the what, at the end of the semester. And like I said, it's very possible for you guys to get distinctions. The last class that I taught, a lot of the students, the distinctions, there were just a few that were you know not attending classes that that did not get the distinctions. But it's very possible as long as you follow through what we are doing. All right. So this is an example uh, of a completed statement of comprehensive income, right? So you can see it starts from sales and it ends with what? It ends with net profit for the year. So essentially, I'm going to go through each item and highlight to you how you get each item and whatnot, and then we can go through our what and can go through our example. But this is just a simple example of a completed statement of cash flow. Uh, is a completed uh, comprehensive income statement. All right. So let's go this way. So there is a document that I will share with you after the lecture, which is uh, a template 
that you can use. Now you can use this template even in your exam. If you want to use it at the end of the year in your exam, you can use it. it makes things much simpler for you at the end of the day. So this template is exactly based on the sample that I've, that I've shown you where you see where we got it from. All right. So when you're doing your statement of comprehensive income, the basic thing that you're trying to do is you're trying to assess the financial performance of the organization. You're trying to assess if the company has made a profit or if the company has made a loss. So for you to assess if a company has made a profit or has made a loss, you have to look at certain financial data. The financial data that you're looking at is basically the revenue or the sales that the company has made versus the expenses that the company has incurred. And then if you take all of the revenues and you subtract all of the expenses, then you will get a profit at the end of the year. Now, each statement of comprehensive income will depend on whether you are doing for a sole trader, whether you are doing for a partnership, and whether you are doing for a company. But the basic preparation is the same. That's why it's important to do unit number one. The basic preparation is the same. The differences are very, very small. Usually, it's just one small thing at the end. That is the difference. So we'll talk about the differences when we do our unit two, unit three, and unit four. But for now, I will just show you the basic preparation. Whether it's a company, a sole trade, or a partnership, I'll show you how do you basically prepare a, what, a statement of comprehensive income. So the starting point is what we call sales, right? Sales simply means the product that the company has sold at the end of the day. So this figure, which is called sales, you will get it in a trial balance. So if we go back to, um, uh, to the example that we're going to be using today, uh, just give me a second. But let me do it this way. Okay, so that I don't move around too much. Let me do it this way. Okay, All right. just give me a second. Let me do it this way. I don't want to be moving around too much. It can end up as confusing. Okay, make this bigger. Bigger again, okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so if you check, this is the example that we're going to be working through, right? Uh, from uh, 2021, uh, question number one, right? I sent it in the, in, the, in the group, right? So you are going to be provided a pre-adjusted trial balance. So pre-adjusted trial balance, it simply means we are saying that the trial balance has got some adjustments that you're going to need to make. Now, these adjustments that you're going to need to make are at the end, right? what says adjustments and additional information. Now, for the purposes of the learning that we want to do right now, for now, let's ignore the adjustments and uh, adjustments and, 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 and additional information. We will talk about them. So don't worry if you say I'm not talking about the adjustments and uh, additional information. We'll talk about them. But for the purposes of learning, let's just focus on the trial balance. Because normally as an accountant, you are focusing on your what on your trial balance. And then once you have your trial balance, and then you will make the adjustments. So let's look at our trial balance. So the trial balance is just a list of the balances of the different T accounts that a company has. So in each exam, you'll be provided, this is the trial balance. And from the trial balance, please fix the what the, the income statement, right? So if we check in this trial balance, there are two sections. There's a section called the balance sheet sections accounts, and then there's a section called the nominal account sections account. Now, when you are doing your comprehensive income statement, the second section, which is the nominal account section, is the one which is going to mainly affect your income statement. Not only, but mainly, which means most of your information will come from that section. Some information might come from the balance sheet section, some information will come from the adjustments, but most of the information will come from this section, the nominal account section. Now, in the nominal account section, there is a debit side and there is a credit side, right? The credit side represents all the revenues that are coming into the company, whereas the debit side represents all of the expenses that the company is facing. So if you check under our nominal account section, you will notice that we have got sales, which is a revenue. We've got a bed debt recovered, which is a revenue. 
we have got commission income, which is revenue. That is why they are on the credit side. Whereas we have got all of these other things that are on the debit side, which are basically our expenses. So this is just an overview of the what of the trial balance. Now, your first point of call when you're doing the income statement is what are the sales that the company is making? Right. So in terms of the sales that the company is making, you just go into your trial balance and you can see them, right? It's written sales 1 million rand, which means that the company sold 1 million rand in what it sells. But you don't record it as it is. You check were there any clients that return goods or services. So usually the return information, it's either in the trial balance or it is in the adjustments. It's either in the trial balance or it is in the what? In the adjustments. So we are going to take this information here and say what are uh, the sales returns 8,000, this figure over here, I hope you can see it. So we are now saying that our sales are what are 1 million, right? Minus what? Minus 8,000, right? That's what our sales is, right? So it's going to be, is equals to 1 million minus 8,000. So that's our sales figure for the what? For the day. Now that we have our sales figure, we go to the next section. The next section of our income statement is called the cost of sales. The cost of sales just represents the purchases made by the organization for them to be able to sell. So for example, if you are an uh, incredible connection, you are selling electronics, right? You are selling laptops and whatnot. You have to go to, 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 to Apple. You have to go to HP to buy the laptops that you're going to sell. So the price that you pay to Apple or to HP is what we are looking at under our cost of sales. So there are companies that do manufacturing by themselves. That's going to be a different story. I think throughout the semester, we'll also do an example where the company is doing manufacturing. But normally, your lecturer does not use the manufacturing examples, but we'll do it during the semester, right, where they're doing manufacturing. But normally, it's very straightforward. You can check over here. Cost of sales is provided. So you can come over here and say, cost of sales, how much? 480 is an expense. So we are going to say 992, which is the sales, less the cost of sales 480, and we're going to get 512. So that is our gross profit. Now, remember what I said, cost of sales represent the purchases of the stock. The stock that you are, you are selling, you purchase right? That's the purchases of the stock. But outside the purchases of stock, there are other expenses that you have to talk about, right? Outside your sales, there are other sources of income that your organization might have at the end of the day. So this is now what goes now under gross profit. So gross profit is basically your sales less your cost of sales. And like I said, sales, there's an adjustment for returns. Cost of sales, normally, there is no adjustment, but you can also check your adjustments if there's something, but normally there is no adjustment for cost of sales. All right, so we go to the next thing. So the next thing under gross profit is now going to be what we call the other operating income. So remember the example that I gave you, that way I said, let's assume that you're incredible connections, which sells are laptop accessories and whatnot, right? So incredible connection, their business is electronics. They sell laptops, they sell phones, they sell electronics, they sell radios and whatnot. But also as an incredible connection, they might, let's say they might have a building, right? At a certain township or at a certain mall, right? They have a building that they are using to make their sales and they have too much space. And then they decide, oh, why don't we rent out the extra space that we have to another shop? Because we are not using it, so we might as well rent it out. So they now have a tenant, someone who's paying the rent out to them. But is that their source of income? Is that their main source of income? No, it's not. So it's now other income that the organization is what is getting. So if you get any other source of revenues or any other income, which is not your main sales, it goes under operating income. Now, there are different types of operating income that you see in your different assignments, in your different examinations and whatnot. So I've listed here a lot of different ones. They, you're not going to find all of them in, the, in, in this specific example, but I've listed for you here different ones so that you can open your mind and understand them. So the first one, I said rent income, right? Rent income is straightforward. Uh, I think I've already given you an example. The second one is interest on debtors. Interest on debtors, what we are saying is, let's say people uh, buy goods on credit, 
from you, right? They come in, they buy the laptop, but they're going to pay at the end of the month. So if you charge them an interest for that credit where they're going to pay at the end of the month, that interest that you're earning from your debtors, it will come under other operating income, the interest from the debtors specifically. Please take note, from debtors specifically. All right. Let's look at the next thing, discounts received. So if you as an organization, you go and buy your, your, your laptops from uh, HP or from Apple, Remember, my example is Incredible Connection, right? You buy your, your laptop from HP or from uh, Incredible Connection, from uh, Apple, and then they offer you a discount. So you're saying you made purchases. Under your cost of sales, you were offered a discount by, this, by these suppliers. So that discount, which is discount received, is also additional income to you as an organization, which goes under other operating income. The next one, it says commission income. So commission income, we're saying that Let's say, uh, for example, uh, an organization such as uh, FNB. All right, let, let's talk about incredible connection. Right? So, incredible connection. Um, let's say, let's assume that uh, they sell. They also start selling insurance for phones, right? So, you buy your phone, but they tell you, oh no, if you also need insurance on the phone, we have got uh, FNB insurance over here. We can also put it for you. You can pay, right? So, which means that the insurance product that they are selling is not for them. It's for FNB but they've put in that as an in-house addition to the sales that they're making. So they're going to get a commission for every phone that they sell insurance on, although the insurance is not theirs. So that extra commission that they're getting from selling insurance in incredible connection, we can now put it under what? Under other operating income, right? Let's look at dead, dead it's uh, dead, okay, it's bad dead, sorry. Bad dead recovery, sorry about that. It's bad debt recovered. So under bad debt recovered, what are we talking about here? We are saying that let's assume that uh, two years ago, there was a client that came to me, right? And the client took a laptop on credit, right? But then they did not pay you your money. And then the client, you know, the client lost their job and you followed up on the money, but they never paid you for two years. So over time, you had to turn it off as an expense that this client is a bad debt. But then let's say after three years, the client, you know, gets another job and decides, oh, I want to come and pay that what? That laptop that I took three years ago. So you are now saying that although we had written this off as an expense two years ago, now that we have gotten the money back, it's now an income to us. So whenever you recover bad debts that were written off in the past, you can now include it as an additional income or other operating income, right? Next one is provision for bed debts. Provision for bed debts, you are simply asking yourself, what was the provision that was there before for the bed debts, right? What was the provision that was there before for the bed debts, right? And has it increased or has it decreased? If it has decreased, it's additional income to you as an organization because you're saying cash flows are coming back to the company. If it has increased, it's an expense. We'll talk about it about that later. Then lastly, there's profit on disposal. If you make any profits on the disposal of old equipment or old buildings or old vehicles or old office furniture, you can include that as additional information for the what for the organization. Now the question is where do I get this information? So you will notice that under narration I've indicated where you get this particular information. So for example, rent income, I've told you you are going to TB means trial balance. You are going to get it from the trial balance, but you need to make adjustments, right? And then interest on data, I've told you you are going to get it from adjustments, right? The discounts received, I've told you you can get it from the trial balance but you might need to make adjustments, right? Commission income, you can get it from the trial balance, but you might need to make adjustments. Then the other three, the remaining three, you will definitely have to make adjustments. You cannot get it from the trial balance. So let's check our trial balance figures here. Other income, remember I said revenues are on the, are on the credit side. So we've got bed debts recovered over here of what, of 2000, right? So we can say here, bed debts recovered 2000, And then we've got commission income here of 10,000. So commission income, 10,000. So for now, just from the trial balance alone, 
those are our other income that we're talking about. But remember, I've written here adjustments, 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 adjustments. This is what I was saying that you need them to come back to this section, which says adjustments, and then make the necessary adjustments that you need to make. But because I'm trying to teach you guys in a class setup, I'm not going to rush to the adjustment. We are just going to ignore them for now. Until we are done, then we are going to go to the adjustments and we're going to talk about them one by one. For now, let's focus on the trial balance so that you get the gist of what we are trying to do before we look at the adjustments. All right, so that's the information from the trial balance, right? So now we have good gross operating income, which is basically our gross profit plus our other operating income, then we get our gross operating income. Now, after our gross operating income, we're gonna subtract expenses. So our expenses are very straightforward. Most of them are under our what? Under our nominal account section. So we can check over here, after sales returns, we've got salaries and wages, 178. Salaries and wages, 178. So again, like I said, most of these things are in your trial balance. But you have to check your adjustments. You have to check if there is any extra adjustments that you need to make, right? You have to check if there are any extra adjustments that you need to make. But we'll look at the adjustments, don't worry. For now, let's run through the trial balance and just see how we go, all right? So 178 for the salaries and wages. For the bed deaths, we've got 2,000. For the stationary, we've got 4,000. For the rent expense, we've got 42,880. For the motor expenses, we've got 34,000. For the telephone expenses, we've got 14,000. For the electricity and water, we've got 24,000. For the bank charges, we've got 6,000. Insurance, we've got 12,000. Okay, and then we've got interest on mortgage loan. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's leave it for now. We'll talk about it in a minute. So those are the general expenses of the organization. So if you add up all of these expenses, you get 316,000, right? And then this 316,000, you subtract it from gross operating income and you get what we call an operating profit. Now, after the operating profit, this is when you look at interest on mortgage. So interest on mortgage, interest on bank loans, they are only looked at after the operating income, right? So we're going to come here and say interest which is what? 26,400. And then we now get our what? Our net profit for the year, which is basically our operating profit, less our interest expense, and then we get our net profit for the year. But this net profit for the year is incorrect. Why is it incorrect? Because remember I said we ignored the adjustments. That is why it is what? That is why it is incorrect, because we've ignored the adjustments. We need to factor in all of the adjustments. But in short, from a perspective, let's assume that your company did not have any adjustments. That is how you prepare a statement of comprehensive income, right? You just look at your trial balance under the nominal account section and your record from sales, cost of sales, you get your gross profit, and then you add other operating income, you get your gross operating income, you subtract your operating expenses, you get your operating profit, and then you put in your interest expenses. You get your net profit for the year. So this is where we're going to end. But if you were a company, then you have to pay taxes. Most companies pay taxes. So if you're a company, then you have to pay taxes. You have to incorporate the issues of what? Of taxation. Now that we are there now, now let's look at our, what? our additional information. So there are two ways to deal with additional information. There are two situations or two ways to do additional information. Additional information or what are called year-end adjustments. This simply means that after we had gone through our books, after we had gone through everything, we noticed that there were some errors within our accounting or within our books. The bookkeeper said, oh, oh, these books are incorrect. There are some errors that are there. When preparing the statements, please factor in these errors. So you can do one of two things. The first thing that you can do is you can take this information, create journals, and correct the trial balance 
so that you can prepare your income statement from a correct trial balance. So that's option number one. You can take this, correct the trial balance, right? And then prepare your income statement from the corrected trial balance. That's one way of doing it. Then the second way of doing it is you can take this information and correct your draft income statement. So remember, you already have got a draft income statement over here, which you prepared using the trial balance. So you can then just take these adjustments and then go one by one, correcting the what the specific figures that need what that need correction at the end of the day. So let's do that. Right? I will show you the trial balance method maybe next week, but for this week, let's 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 go directly into our what into our draft income statement and correct it using the what using the adjustments. So we're going to go through adjustment, every single adjustment, and see what does this adjustment affect. That's basically it. what does this adjustment affect. So adjustment number one, according to the physical stock taking completed on 28 February 2021, the following inventories were on hand. Right? The following inventories were on hand. Number one, trading inventory, 136. Number two, stationary 600. So let's look at 1.1, trading inventory 136. So what they are saying is this. We counted the stock, we counted the inventory, and we noticed that it was 136,000. Okay. What about our books? What do they say about trading inventory? If we go to the balance sheet account section, if we check here, it says according to the accounting books of the company, trading inventory is 140,000. So if we are saying our books are saying 140,000, but we counted the items and we only have 136,000, we have a shortage, don't we? We have a shortage, right? We have a shortage. So this shortage might mean a couple of things. All right, let me do this here. 140,000 minus 136,000. So this is what? Adjustment 1.1, so that you, you know where, where we got this from. Adjustment 1.1, right? So this is what 4,000. So the shortage simply means there is either maybe some stock was damaged, right? Or maybe there was some theft pilferage that happened in the company. Because the books are saying we should have 140, but we counted and we only noticed 136. So where is the other 4,000? Where is the extra laptops worth 4,000 at what it incredible connection? I mean, someone stole the, the, the products or they, 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 they were damaged and disposed of. So if they were stolen or they were damaged and disposed of, that's an expense to us. So we call that expense trading stock deficit. We call the expense trading stock deficit. And we need to put it as an additional expense in our, in our operating expense. So remember, Initially, we did not have this. Now we're going to come in and add under expenses. We're going to add an extra 4,000, right? And that is going to change our what? Our expenses figure over there from the figure that we initially what initially calculated. So we go to the next thing. But let me do this here. Now come back to these totals. I don't want them to confuse you. Just deleting the totals here because we are going to calculate, recalculate the totals after we are done, right? We're going to recalculate the totals, right? We just need to make the adjustments first, all right? So we've done adjustment 1.1, right? Let's go to adjustment 1.2. Adjustment 1.2 says the stationary with 600 rand. Now remember, we bought stationary with 4,000 rand at the beginning of the year, right? And we are saying that we still have 600 rand of stationary not yet used. So this 600 stationary is not yet used. Now remember the what? The matching concept that we talked about last uh, on Tuesday. We said the matching concept, we talked about the accruals concept, right? Where we said that you should match revenues and expenses for a particular year. So this 600 rand in stationary is not for this year. Why? Because we did not use 600 rand in stationary. It's going to be for next year. So we need to subtract it from the current cost of the stationary. So we are going to take Adjustment 1.2. We're going to take our cost of stationary, which is 4,000, subtract to the 600 rand in what in stationary that we still have that we have not yet used for the what for the company, right? So at the end of the day, 
If we make that adjustment, how much are we left with? 3,400 rand. That's how much stationery we end up left with at the end of the day, right? So that's 1.2, right? We go to the next adjustment, adjustment number two, right? Adjustment number two says, an account received from air fitters on 28 February 2021 for the installation of air conditioning unit in one of the vehicles was debited to the motor expenses account in era 6,000 rand, right? It was debited to the motor expenses account in era 600 rand. Okay, just give me a second here. So we are saying as an organization, our motor expenses account, right? Our motor expenses account, which is currently 34,000, Right, because that's the expense that it's currently 34,000. We are saying that that figure is wrong. It should not be 34,000, right? Why it should not be 34,000? Because there is 6,000 in there, right? There is 6,000 in there that should not be in that specific account, right? It was debited there in error, right? So we should then what? We should then re reduce the 34,000 minus the 6,000 there. And we get 28,000. So that's adjustment number two. Okay, we go to adjustment number three. No entry has been made for interest at 12% per annum that was charged for two months to the overdue account of a debtor who owed 6,000 rand. So we're saying that there's someone who owed us money 6,000 rand and we charged them interest of 12% per annum for two months, but we did not record it. So remember what I said, interest on what? On debtors. So our, on our interest from debtors, we would not record it anything. We are now saying it's 12% Right? Remember, it's, 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 it's 12% per annum. It's 12% per annum, but you only need for what? For two months. So it's 12% multiplied by two divided by 12. For us to only get two months, it's two, well, there are 12 months in a year. So only need two months, right? Then multiply by what? By 6,000 rands. Okay, so that's adjustment, adjustment number three. This is correct, let me just double check. Where am I? No entry has been made for interest of 12% per annum that was charged for two months on an overdue account by a date. That's fine, okay? And then we go to the next one, uh, number four, right? Number four says, uh, Okay, sorry. Number four says an electronic fund transfer for 1,330 was made to Royal Traders on 28 February from a data after a settlement discount of 5% was deducted. No entries have been made for this transaction. So I think that there is someone who owed us money 1,330, right? That's how much they owed us. And then, but this money, when they paid us, we had provided them a 5% discount, a 5% discount. So we need to record the discounts allowed. We need to record the discounts allowed, right? Okay, where's discounts? Allowed. Hey, sorry, James. Can I interrupt you, Greg? Yes. It says it says the payment was made to Royal Traders. Mm -hmm. So, isn't Royal Traders a supplier of yours, and you busy paying them? Sorry. Is Royal Traders a supplier that you are paying? No, Royal Traders is the company they, that we are working for. 
Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry. My bad. Me, Thank yeah. you. Royal Traders is the company that we're working for. So okay, if, if the payment you. was Thank made you. to them from a data, it means that the data owed Royal Traders. It was a customer that was okay. Okay. So we okay, perfect. Uh, allowed a discount of 5%. Cool. Right. Thank you, man. All right. That's fine. Uh, so that was adjustment number what? Uh, um, adjustment number four. Okay, adjustment number four. All right. Adjustment number four. Okay. So we want to calculate that a 5% discount. All right. So here's the tricky part with this one. Uh, it says here, how much was transferred? 1330. So 1330 was after the 5% discount. So what does that tell you? It means 1330 was 95%, right? 1330 was 95%. So we're going to say 1330 divided by what? By 95%, which is 0 0.95. 1330 divided by 0 0.95. And then, so the total is actually 1.4. That was the amount that was what that was owed, right? And then we're going to multiply that, all right, so that I don't lose people. We're going to do this so that I don't lose people because I don't want to lose people here. I know this thing is arithmetic, you can easily lose people. So, this is the amount that was owed, right? So, 5% of that that's what we want. 5% of that is what we want at the end of the day, right? So therefore, 5% of what? Of 1,400, that's what we want. Because to that, which is 70 right. That's the what? That's the discount that has been what? That has been allowed 70 right. It's 5% of 1.4, point, uh, 1 right? Remember what I said? They paid 1,330. That's the amount that they paid, 1330, right? But 1330 was after the settlement discount of 5%, which means that the 1330 is not the full amount. It's only 95% of the amount. The 5% they did not pay because it was discounted. So how much did they owe initially? It means that they owed 1,400 initially, which is 1330 divided by 95%, because it is 95%, right, to get the 1.4. Then what you now need is 5% of 1.4 for you to get the actual discount that they were offered at the end of the day. All right, so that's adjustment number five. Ah, sorry, adjustment number four. So go to adjustment number five. Adjustment number five says this, the provision for bed debts must be decreased to 3,000 rand. The provision for bed debts must be decreased to 3,000 rand, right? So um, we are saying that there was, a, remember what I said about provision. Whenever you're looking at provision, check what was the provision that was there before. So if you go to the balance sheet account section, you can see over here provision for bed debts, 8,000. So there was a provision for bed debts for 8,000. That was there before. That was in the account before. But now it says it must be decreased to 3,000, right? So we had 8,000 before, but it must be decreased to 3,000. Now, remember what I told you, if you are decreasing provision for bed debts, it's an income to you as an organization. So by how much did we decrease it for? So if we had 8,000 and we decrease it to 3,000, it means how much did we gain? We gained 5,000 in what? In revenue. So this is adjustment number five. So for this one, I, I, I urge you, always pay careful attention. Students lose marks for this one because they don't pay attention to the direction. It's either increasing or it's decreasing, right? So if, if it has been increased, no take note by how much? If it has been decreased by how much? Don't look at the figure where it says two. Two, it means it, that's now the new figure. It was 8,000, now it's 3,000. We don't deal with that. We deal with the difference between what it was before and what it is now. The difference is what we want to deal with at the end of the day. So that's our provision for bed debt adjustment number five. Adjustment number six, the telephone account for February 2021 
was due to be paid on 2 March 2021. Remember, we did last week a cross concept on Tuesday, a cross concept, where I said you're going to get a bill at the end of the month, right? And you're not going to pay it. You're going to pay it maybe next year or next month. When you are paying that bill, you are paying for something that was done last year. Therefore, it should have been recorded last year. So we're saying that the bill is for February 2021, right? So the bill should have been recorded in February 2021, but it's only now being paid in March. Why is this important? Remember this statement over here. I want you to go back here. Look at this statement here. Prepare the statement of comprehensive income for royal traders for the year ended 28 February 2021, which means that all of your transactions should end 28 February 2021. But should we then ignore this telephone bill? Right? Should we ignore it? No, because you were saying it's in March, so we should ignore it. It's not for 20, it's not before 28 February. We should ignore it. But no, we do not ignore it. Why? Because although we have not yet paid for it, it was for February 2021. So we have to include it. So we are now going to go into our telephone expenses, which is 14,000 from our trial balance, and we are going to add 1.4. So this is now adjustment. Adjustment number six, which is 14K plus the 1.4 for February. Plus 1.4 from what? From February, right? Straightforward, we go to adjustment number seven, right? Adjustment number seven, uh, rent, uh, okay. This one, forgive me. Let's do this one as the last one because it can get very tricky. I want to do this one as the last one. Adjustment number seven. Let's jump it for now. Let me just highlight it so that we don't forget it. We are going to come back to this one because I know it confuses a lot of people because there's a lot of algebra usually on rent expenses. I'm just going to highlight it. We are going to do it as the last one after we've done all of the other ones. Let's go to the next one. Adjustment number eight, interest expense, right? Interest on loan for February 2021 has not yet been paid. So there is a loan that the organization has, and that loan is paying interest on, but we're saying we've not yet paid for February. It's the same thing like the telephone thing. We have not yet paid it, but we need to include it. So how do we do it? We can do one thing. We can calculate what was the actual total interest for the year and only record the total interest for the year. Or we can calculate what was the interest for February and record the interest for February. All right. Both of those things should give us the same answer at the end of the day, right? So according to our trial balance, 26,400 is what has been paid, right? But how much is the interest? So if we check in the balance section, it says the mortgage loan, Leo Bank, 18% per annum, 160,000. So we have a mortgage loan, right? 18% per annum, right? So this means that if I do this, 18% multiplied by 160,000, I should be able to get the total interest that the organization should pay. Eighteen, uh, it gives me here twenty eight eight hundred. I hope that's correct. Eighteen percent multiplied by one sixty. Okay, it gives me twenty eight eight hundred as the total that the organization should pay. But we are saying that it's so. That's what I say. I can actually take this figure and record it there. Or alternatively, like I said, I can get the monthly figure for February, which is zero comma. 18 18% divided by 12 months, right? Multiply by 160, which gives me what? 2,400. So I can then come over here and say this figure that I had, I add what? 2,400 and see, I still end up with the same answer, which is 28,800. So I can go and calculate for the month and edit or just calculate the figure for the whole year and record it as it is at the end of the day. So that's adjustment number what? Adjustment number eight. Okay, we go to adjustment number nine, right? Adjustment number nine, the insurance total 
includes an annual premium of 4,800 that was paid for the period 1 June 2020 to 31 May 2021. So the insurance premium includes an amount that was paid from 2020 up to May 2021. Now remember, I want you to go back to that statement that we talked about earlier. This statement over here is a very important statement. This statement over here, I'm gonna put it in red. Year ended 28 February 2021. So everything should end 28 February 2021. But here we see that this insurance premium that we are now talking about, it says here, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. It goes up to 31 May. So which means that this insurance premium includes insurances that were paid for March 2021, that were paid for April 2021, that were paid for May 2021. Three months, extra three months. We should remove them according to the what? The matching and the across concept that we talked about on what on Tuesday. That is why those concepts are important, right? According to the matching and the across concept, we should remove those three months. So how do we remove those three months? So how long did they pay for? How long did they pay for? We know that it was one June to 31 May. That is 12 months. Because if you say June, July, August, September, November, October, December, January, February, March, April, May, that's what? That's 12 months. So 4.8 was for 12 months, right? 4.8 was for what? For 12 months. So let's go to insurance here. Just going to do some calculations. So if 4.8 was for 12 months divided by 12, how much would they pay in per month? 4.8 divided by 12, they were paying 400 per month, right? And how many months do we want to remove? We want to remove three months, right? Multiply by what? By three, which is what? Which is equals to what? To one, 200. So that's the figure that we remove. That's the figure that we remove. So we're gonna take our 12,000 over here and we're gonna remove minus one, 2,000. And then we get 10.8. So this is what? Adjustment number what? Nine. Okay. And then we go to the next one. Uh, adjustment number 10. Cash deposit fees of 600 rand that appeared in February 2021 bank statement were left out in error when the cash journals for February were prepared. So there is a what? There is a fee, a bank charge that was not included in our trial balance or in our journals because the trial balance is prepared from the journals. So this 600 that was not included, we need to include it. So we now go to our bank charges and just say adjustment, uh, 10, which is just going to be 6,000 plus 600. Okay. And then we go to adjustment number 11. On equipment at cost, or oh, sorry, number 11, uh, this one provide for depreciation as follows. Now I think I've explained to you guys what depreciation is. Well, I said depreciation is basically, um, for example, I, I think I've given you an example of a car, right? Where well, I said that if you've got a car, you buy a car at 500,000, you use it for two years, it's no longer worth 500,000, it has lost value. So there is a way you can calculate the loss of value in terms of that asset. So you can either calculate it using the straight line method, or we can calculate it using uh, the depreciation method, the reducing balance method, right? So let's make some workings here for depreciation, right? So equipment. So that's our first thing. Equipment. Right? So equipment, we are told here that is 10% on cost. So this is the straight line method. 10% of cost is the straight line method, right? So what we now need to know is what is the cost of the equipment, right? What is the cost of the equipment? So let's come here. Uh, cost of equipment under balance sheet. Equipment, it cost 240,000. So I'm gonna record here, 240,000, right? But there's an adjustment, please take note. It says here, 
equipment that cost 20,000 was purchased on 1 September 2020. The purchase has been recorded, which means of this amount, there is 20,000 purchased during the year. So I'm gonna create an extra space here. Just give me a minute, just give me a minute, sorry. All right, let me say here, all right, let's do this. Cost again, yeah? So cost, I'm gonna write it this way. One, March 2020 to 28, Feb 2021. I want you to understand something. Here. So we said that it was 240, right? But we said of that 240, 20,000 was purchased September, not one month. It did not go for the full year, right? So then we say your cost, one September, 2020 to 28 February, 2021. Now you might ask, why did I separate them? I separated them because remember it's, 10% per annum on cost. The 10% is per annum per year. So you, all, you can only multiply for the full year if the equipment or the asset was used for the full year. But we know that there is 20,000 in assets that was not, what, that was not used for the full year. We know that there's 20,000 in assets that was not what? That was not used for the full year. So we cannot include it also as a what? As a full year figure, right? So now if it says 10% of the cost over here, we are now going to say what? 220 multiplied by what? By 10% and we get 2002. And then we're going to say 20,000 here multiplied by what? By 20%, by 10%, sorry. Uh, what am I doing here? By 10%, be patient with me. I'm going to explain something. So we've multiplied by 10%. This figure on top here, this is good, this is correct. Right, this one is correct. I'm gonna put it uh, in a different color like this. It's correct, but this one is wrong. We need to further adjust. This one is what is incorrect. It needs adjustment. Why? Because it did not go for a full year, right? So how many times did it go for? So it went for September, October, November, December, January, February, which is six months. So when we're saying multiply by 0, 0,1, we should also include that it's only for six months, which is six over 12, six months over a total of 12 months, which is 0, 0,5, right? So you will notice that it will be adjusted to what? To 1,000. Therefore, our depreciation for the year for equipment is going to be 23,000. I hope it was clear here what I did. So this one, we just said two, two, zero, one, two, three, multiply by 0, 0,1. And then this one, we said 20,000 multiply by 0, 0,1, multiply by six over 12. That's what we did there, just in case you missed it, right? So we now have our 23,000, right? So depreciation for equipment, we can record it as what? As 23,000. Let's go to depreciation for vehicles. It says the on vehicles is 20% per annum on the diminishing balance. Diminishing balance means on the reducing balance, right? So we're gonna come here and say vehicles. V vehicles, right? So what is the cost of the vehicles? We go to our trial balance, it's 360. So for us to know what is the reducing balance or what is the diminishing balance, we need accumulated depreciation. So we go to accumulated depreciation for vehicles, which is 186. This one over here, in case you're not seeing it, this one, 186. And then we get our what? Our book value, or I can call it our diminishing balance, right? Just to, to, to make it clear for you what we're talking about. Right? So that's our book value of the balance that is diminishing at the end of the day. So now that we have it, so remember this is, uh, I think people get confused over here. Let me do this instead. It's 360, 
thousand minus 180,000. That's how we got that. Because I see the figures are the same, so it might end up confusing someone, right? So then what Sorry, is the Charles. depreciation? Yes? The oh, accumulated depreciation is 186. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So th thank, thank you for you, that, Mr. I was wondering why, why I was confused with this answer. 186. Thank you, thank you for that. Yeah. So we get 174, and right? now that makes more sense. Okay. So the depreciation for the year now, we are not going to say this one, this 174 multiplied by now. What is the rate on the reducing balance? It's 20%. Multiply by what? By 0, 0,2. Right? So this is basically 174 multiplied by 20 what? 20%. Okay. So that's how we get 34,800. Right? So we can come here, the position of vehicles. It's going to be what? 34,800, right? So this is what? Workings for adjustment 11. All right. So adjust 11. Adjust 11. Okay. All right. So we're left with one only, the one for adjustment number seven. Now let's go to adjustment number seven, right? So adjustment number seven, rent expense has been paid up to 31 March, 2021. Okay, please follow me on this one. Don't lose me. Rent expense has been paid up to 31 March, 2021. So we are saying, right, this figure of rentals that we have over here, I'll put it in red, right, of 42,000. This is from... 1 March 2020 up to 31 March 2021. Now I need you to think how many months is that? Right? How many months is that? So if we go from 1 March 2020, right, up to 31 March 2021, that is 13 months. Please do not lose me there. That is 13 months. Because we're going to have March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February which gives you 12 months, and then another match, which gives you 13 months. So we're saying the rent has been paid for 13 months. Now, remember our matching concept. You only use figures for that specific year. You cannot include figures for other years, right? So we only need for 12 months. That's the first thing when you're doing rent. We only need for 12 months, not 13, only for 12 months. But there is a tricky part here. It says here, not the rental was increased by 10% with effect from 1 December 2020 to make the necessary adjustments. Which means that this is not going to be now be an easy question. It was easy before because you could have said 42880 divided by 13 months for you to get the monthly rental. But you cannot do that. Why? Because the rent that was paid in November, and the rent that was paid in December is different. I hope you are getting that. Because from December, they were paying an extra 10% in rentals, which means that in December, in, um, what's this month? In December, in uh, uh, January, in February, and in the extra March, they were paying an extra 10% in what? In rentals, right? I hope we understand each other then. Okay. They were paying an extra, uh, 10 percent in what in rentals. Now I want you to follow me here. All right, I'm not gonna put it there. Let me create space. Here. I want you to follow me. I'm gonna do some arithmetic here. I'm gonna do a bit of arithmetic. Uh, what do I want to do here? Okay, just give me a second. Where is match? Okay. I want to do some arithmetic. So just follow me, don't lose me. So let's assume rent in one March 2020 was X, right? Let's assume rent in one March 2020 was X. I hope if I lose you anyway, please highlight because this one I know it can lose people. So we are saying, let's assume when they started paying rentals, they were paying X rentals per month, right? They were paying what? X rentals per month, which means that in March, they paid X 
in uh, April, they paid X, you know, next month they paid X and et cetera. So how many months did they pay X rentals for? So we've got March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, which is eight months, right? Which is what? Which is eight months. So we are saying here, they, what? They paid eight months, which is what? Which is March to what? To November, where they were what? Where they were paying X per what? Per month. So if I was to ask you, right? If I was to ask you here, Okay, uh, where is this thing? Uh, where is this? Okay, just give me a second here. Where is wrap text, wrap text? Okay, there. So if I was to ask you a question and say, what was the total rental paid? It becomes what? It becomes eight months multiplied by what? By the X amount of rentals that they will pay. Correct? Right. So I hope we're still together there, right? Now let's continue. So now we go to what? We go to uh, the remaining months of the year, which are what? Which are December, January, February, and another March, right? December, January, February, and another March, right? So is this correct? Is it eight? Uh, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, November, okay? And then December, January, December, January, February, March, why am I figures, am I coming out somewhere wrong? Please help me here if, I, if I'm missing something. Well, it's supposed to be 13 months, not 12. It's nine months. It's not it's eight nine months. months, the first one. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Nine. Was I'm, I'm not sure how I'm missing it in my calculations. But it's nine months because I know it's supposed to be 13 at the end, right? So we're now saying we now have December, right? December, January, February, March, which is now four months, right? So we are saying that they then paid for four months, where they were now paying with an extra 10%. Where they were now paying with what? With an extra 10%. So we're saying that for four months, which is four, they were paying what? X, right? Plus, they were paying what? 10% extra. All right, guys, just give me a second here. There is a call that I'm receiving, which is very urgent. Just give me one, uh, let's say two minutes. I'm coming back. Yes, I'm in a lecture, Kuda. What's up? Okay, uh, sorry guys, sorry for that. Right. Where were we? All right. So I think that we are now paying an extra 10%, right? We are now paying an extra 10%, plus an extra what 10% that they're what that they're paying. So in arithmetic, there are different ways of solving for this, right? There are different ways of looking at these four solutions. So I'm going to show you number one, option number one. So option number one, we are going to say 9x, which is the first nine months that we paid for, right? Plus 1.1, right? So boys, remember, they are now paying an extra 10%, 1.1, right? Multiplied by 4x, right? Which is the what? Which is the extra four months where they're paying an extra what? An extra 10%, right? So if you put this together, 1.1 uh, multiplied by 4, multiplied by four, it gives you 4.4. 4. 1.1 multiplied by four, it gives you 4.4. 4. 
and then uh, 4.4 4 plus 9, it gives you 13.4, right? So this is going to be what? Equals to 13.4, 13.4x, right? So that's the total rental that was paid. 13.4x is the total rental that was what? That was paid. But we already have the figure, remember, of the total rental, right? We already have the figure for the total rental, which we know to be what? Right, the total figure for the rental. We already know that um, with our figure for rental, 42,880. So we are now saying 42,880 is equals to 13.4x, right? And then you can solve this algebra. X is equals to 42.880 divided by 13.4. So 13, 42. 880 divided by 13.4, which gives us 3.2, which is equals to x is equals to 3.2. Now remember what we said in the beginning. Let's assume rent paid on 1 March 2020 was x, right? So which means now I know how much rent they were paying when they started paying. So if I know how much rent they were paying when they started paying, I can then now calculate how much rent they paid in what? In March 2021. So how much rent they pay in March 2021 is now going to be what? For March now. It's going to be what? 3,200 multiplied by what? By 1.1 or multiplied by that? By that extra 10% that they what? That they now are now paying. So that is going to be what? 3.52. Three five two zero, right? So that's option one of looking at this. Then I'm going to show you option number two. I hope it will be much easier to understand because I know this thing can uh, can really really can really really frustrate a lot of students when they're looking at it because there's so many little nitty gritties. So just give me a second here. I want to show you option two of how to get at the same solution. Okay, just one second. Just want to create some space to work on. Then I can show you option number two of how you can arrive at the same answer. It's more or less the same thing but it might be much more understandable at the end of the day. <laughs> All right, so we started this at the same thing, right? That we started, right? Where we are saying that we need to know how much rent out they were paying per month for us to know, now that they are paying an extra 10%, we need to know how much money they were paying in the first month. So we're saying here, the question is how much rent was what? Was paid in what? In March, 2020, right? So that we can calculate, so as to what to calculate the rent that was paid in what in March 2021, right? So we're saying now, if we get that, right? So we're going to say here, rent March 2020, right? So for us to get rent for March 2021, right? We're now saying rent March 2021 is going to be what? Is going to be equal to what? To the rent for March 2020, right? Plus 10% extra, right? 10% of the what of the rent because they're now paying an extra what? An extra 10%. So that's basically what we are what, what we're saying. Now the question is: how do we get the rent that was paid in what? In March 2021, at the end of the what? At the end of the day, which gives us back to what we're trying to do here initially. Where we are now saying that it's going to be nine months, right? nine months of paying the same amount, right? So which means it's nine months rent, uh, let's put this X again, it's nine X, right? Nine X plus what? Plus four X, right? Which is the second uh, other month, then plus what? Plus zero comma one. Multiply by what? Multiply by X multiply by four, right? So it's the first nine months, we were paying X same amount, plus the other four months, we were paying X uh, same amount, but 
he paid an additional. So this one, we can even combine it into one figure here and say 12 months of paying the same. That's why I'm saying slightly more or less the same thing. We're saying 12 months of paying the same rentals. But we know that there were what? There were four additional months where we paid an extra 10%. So that's what we're just going to do. So going to say 12 months of paying the same rent, sorry, not 12, sorry, 13 months of paying the same rental, right? Plus the additional four months where we paid 0 0,1 extra, right? So 0 0,1 multiplied by X, multiplied by the additional amounts of a debt. So that is where I was saying that it can be made easier to understand. So 0 0,1 multiplied by four gives you 0 0,4. So we're now saying it's going to be 13x plus 0,4x is equals to 42,880, right? And then that is going to be what? It's going to be 13.4x is equals to 42,880. And then we are back again to what we did here at the end of the day. We are back again to what we did here, and then we can calculate for the what? For that extra month. So at the end of the day, we arrived just the same way we did, but the only difference, instead of going the long route of having 4X and 9X and 1.1 and whatnot X, we are simply saying every single month, the rental is the same for 13 months. So it's 13 multiplied by X, the rental, then plus the additional that they pay, which is 0 0,1 multiplied by X, multiplied by the four months that they paid the additional four, which gives us 0, 0,4x at the end of the water four months. So it's easier. It looks like it's easier. I don't know which of the two you understand better, but I think the second one will be a lot easier. You are simply taking the monthly rental, multiply by the number of months, and then whatever they paid extra, you separate it, you record it separately as 0, 0,4x or as 0, 0,1 multiplied by x, multiplied by the four months where you paid the extra rental. Right. So that's how you get that. So at the end of the day, you have 3520, three, right? So we got our rental offer here. So it becomes 42880 minus 3520. Minus 3520. Right. So we get 3960. That's our final rental. So that is adjustment number seven. All right, so now that we have adjustment number seven, now we can calculate our what, our final figures. So again, gross profits, it's simply us taking the what, the cost of sales and the sales, and then our operating income, we're just taking our gross profit, adding other operating income, and the, our operating expenses is just the total here. Total of all of the expenses. And then our net profit for the year. Yes, sorry. That one minus total expenses. And then our net profit for the year, we get 130,770, right? So in summary, this is what we do, right? Number one, for you to prepare a statement of comprehensive income, you need a trial balance, right? So like I said, there are two options. Option one, you check the figures that are in the trial balance in the nominal account section, and you prepare a draft profit and loss account, or you prepare a draft income statement. And then after you've prepared your draft, you go through your adjustments and adjust your figures. Then finally, you calculate your totals, and then you get your final answer. Option number two, we're going to deal with it next week. Option number two is where you take the adjustments, you adjust these figures in the trial balance, and then you use the adjusted trial balance to, what, to prepare the what the income statement at the end of the day. But in short, that is how you prepare your income statement, your profit and loss account. Are there any particular questions in what we have done today? Any questions? OK. 
Okay, so if there are no questions, I'm going to send you guys this homework. This is what we'll be doing next week. Remember what I said, we're going to spend a lot of time on unit number one. The reason why we're spending a lot of time on unit number one because this is where your exam is coming from. This is where your exam is going to come from. So I want you guys to really get hold of unit number one. So I'm going to send you this paper. Uh, it's from uh, 23 June, uh, 2022. Question number one. So I need you guys to do question number one from 23 June, 2020. And then when we meet on Tuesday, please uh, try try to attempt this one. Don't, don't just ignore and say, I will see on Tuesday what we need. It will not benefit you if you don't try this. Because I've shown you how to do it. I'm going to send you the template, my template, my Excel template to make it even easier for you, right? So I tried so that when we come to the lesson, you actually see, oh, I made a mistake here. I made a mistake here, I made a mistake here. If you master it by Tuesday, it means that even before we even finish the semester, you already have 20 marks for free in the exam. Because the, what we did there, that's 20 out of 20. You already have your 20 marks for free at the end of the day. So please attempt this in your spare time, right? Uh, so that at least by Tuesday when we meet, you would have attempted it. So we will go through this together on Tuesday. Maybe we spend maybe, I think 20 or so minutes. And then after we've gone through together, I will show you the second option that I was talking about. I'll show you the second option. Then once we're done with the second option, then we go to the what? Uh, to the balance sheet, we go to the cash flow statement and what. So that's how we'll be working. So that at the end of the day, by the time we get to the exams, these things should be you know, a piece of work for you. It should not be that difficult. All right. So thank you guys for, for coming in. Uh, and I hope I will see you on, 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 on Tuesday. But please remember what I said. Uh, the, the classes that I'm conducting, uh, they are paid classes now uh, going forward, which is now in February, they are going to be paid classes, which means you need to make a payment for you to be able to join the class. You can pay in installments. You don't need to pay the full amount at once. You can pay in installments at the what, at the end of the hour. Uh, so I think my power went, that's why my stack over here. So you can pay in what in installments, but you can stay in the group, even if you don't want to, to pay for the classes, you can stay in the group. I will create separate for the guys that have paid for the classes because in the group, I will still be there. I will still help you out guys whenever there are questions that you are stuck on and whatnot, you can post them in the group and we can see how much we can what we can help each other within even the group. So stay in the group. I'm not gonna delete anyone or whatnot. We'll still be helping each other in the group. The classes are 800 rand for the semester. The 800 rand includes uh, the two assignments, the two KCQs that you're going to do. I'll help you one-on-one, -on -one, each and every one of the people that you play the class. I'll help you one-on-one -on -one to make sure that you have 10 out of 10 out of your what, out of your KCQs, just to make sure that you have 100% from your KCQs. Then it also includes exam preparation, which is what we are doing right now. We are basically prepared. I'm not worried about the assignments because I know the assignments going to be 100% for anyone who joins my class. But what we are doing right now is exam preparation. And I know that if you follow through what we are doing, you will definitely get a distinction. Most likely 80, 90%. You may miss one or two things, but most likely 80, 90%. So please join through. You can pay in installments. You can pay maybe 300 this month and the 200 next month and whatnot until you're what, until you're done. Right. So I will post my, my details for the payment for those that are interested. And I will send the video for this one. This one is for free. So I'll send the video in the what in the class. So I will no longer be sending videos in the in the group because, like I said, at least if someone is paying, we need to honor them and make sure that they are the only one getting access to the videos. But I will still be there in the group if you need, you know, extra help here and there. You can also even give me a call and we can see how we can work. We can help each other out. Okay. Thank you guys for coming in. Hope you have a pleasant evening. So you said to desktop? Yes. I just want to know, is, is the which modules does the 800 include? No, it's for just which for model? financial reporting and analysis. Oh, okay, thank yeah, you. It's just for financial reporting and analysis, yes. Thank you. Someone said you had said uh, 600 for six months. Yes, it's 600 if I am not doing your assignments. It's 600 rand if I'm not doing assignments. If you're doing your assignments by yourself, it's 600 rand. But I will teach you how to do the assignment, it's 600 rand. But if you want me to help you to do one-on-one -on -one with you, with the assignments, it becomes 800. Because the assignments are 200 rand. That is for the what? For the assignments. The 200 is going towards the assignments. But the 600 is going towards the classes. So I would prefer you just pay 600, 800 so that we know that your assignments are 100 out of 100. 
also at the end of the world, at the end of the day. So thank you guys. I'll send the banking details in the group. I hope we will meet each other on what on Tuesday. So if there's anything else that you need, feel free to call me. You guys with my contacts, you know I talk in the group. Feel free to call me or to WhatsApp me. If I don't answer you, I might be in a class teaching some other students. I will just, just throw a WhatsApp. I will answer you later. All right, thank you.